Okay, so I've been playing around more with this uh, Android 10 build on Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, this is the 8 gig model, although it works perfectly well on the 4 gig model as well. I found a bit more information on it. Uh, there's a website called lemoncrest.com, uh, and it's all in Spanish, but uh, I've run it through Google Translate, as you can see here. Uh, and so it says, one of the parts the community has demanded the most is the official native support of Android on our preferred board. Android promised to be the launch of Linux to the mass public an open operating system and without secrets for the community and it goes on but uh, and then there's a bit in Spanish at the end there but um, it it is really really good at games and also emulation now if you've used Android on Raspberry Pi before now uh, the gaming was was terrible uh, and emulators it would only play the really bottom end of emulators whereas this plays some really good games. Now, I did try Fortnite uh, and it told me that the device wasn't supported. I tried PUBG and it crashed. But some of the other games, uh, so something like Crossy Road, for instance, which is still 3D and uh, it's quite a fast game with lots going on. It doesn't usually do that. Okay, so it's just restarted because uh, it crashed, but I'll try that again. And the sound is coming through the analog connection on the Pi, just going through a speaker. And they just seem to have got the support for games just right so if I you can see it's playable it's not laggy to the point that it and this would be a game where oh if you had lags uh, it would be uh, unplayable really and you can see that it's responsive uh, it's uh, it's responding to every button press I'm using a wired Xbox 360 controller and it is, it's nice and snappy, it's, uh, the graphics look decent, I don't know what resolution it's running at, I think it's 720 it runs at. And I realise this isn't the most graphically intensive game, but before this it was terrible. Oh, right, so let's leave it there and I'll quit out of this. Quitting out of the game, usually it's F1 to go back. And if you're lucky, you'll get something that says uh, that it's quitting out of the game. In this case, it just minimizes the game. So let's try something else, Beach Buggy Racing. So a 3D racing game, again, looks really nice. Uh, I can't use my screen capture device, that's why I'm having to use my uh, phone to record all of this. And there is sound, it's just a bit quiet. You can see all the menus doesn't struggle at all. And this unlocks loads of potential for the Pi because there are loads of Android games that support controller. Loads of emulators as well, and I'll go through emulators in a minute. This uses the trigger for accelerate and it's uh, analog control. And it's got all the sort of drifting elements, the weapons, as you can see. Uh, but it it's super smooth and just running incredibly well. And as I say, this, this is something that we haven't had on the Pi uh, up until now that we've been way, way behind this uh, on Android. Even though, uh, so the Consta Kang build, which has just been updated, uh, doesn't have any 3D support. Um, but actually as, as a video and an audio uh, and an operating system device actually works really well and he does mention that there's SSD uh, or USB boot support so I'm looking into that anyway uh, because I really did like it uh, if you're going to use it as a media center uh, then that would be something that would would work for you I don't know why I shot out then but uh, but let's try something else anyway it's actually quitting out of the games that I struggle with because there isn't always so I'm pressing the back button on my controller Hopefully it will get me back. See, Crossy Road's still there. I know this is the way that mobile devices work. But I don't know if that impedes the performance. So every now and then I'll, I'll restart it to, to make sure nothing's running. Uh, so what else have I got? So Asphalt 8 uh, also works a little bit more intensive and doesn't work as well. Um, so it's, it's a bit laggy. It's still enjoyable to play, um, but it's, uh, it is definitely a bit laggy. And a good way to search for these sorts of games is to look for TV compatible games. I've got a Sony TV which has got Android in it. Uh, and so a lot of the games that I can play on that, I can play on this now. 
So, uh, career. I do find there's almost too many options on this game. Uh, and there's, there's so much about power-ups and gifts and stuff like that. You just want to have a race. Right, classic. Oh, there's a new race there. Let's go back and try that one, because I haven't tried that yet. And wait till you see emulation on this. I did uh, PPSSPP in a previous video on this build of Android 10, uh, and it's also Lineage OS. And it, it, was, uh, it was running really well, but it, it, because I'd had other things running, uh, it was a bit laggy, and it isn't laggy when you play it normally. Uh, but I've got Dreamcast coming up, and, uh, and that plays perfectly well. So you get a bit worried when you see this, uh, because it's quite jerky when it shows the overview of the track. But when you actually play it, it's, uh, it seems to cope pretty well. I don't know what the boost is on this. Oh, it's that button, right, okay, B. Oh, I've taken someone out already, that. So it's not, it's not as good as the beach buggy racing, but it's still, you still get that sense of speed. You still feel like you're racing. And obviously the environment is, is pretty stunning on this. Oh, can I go down there? You can often, no, you can often uh, make a mistake in this game and it finds you a little shortcut. So I realise this isn't the best showing for this, but it's, again, it's so impressive that it's actually doing it. Let's see if we can get, oh, I haven't got any, haven't got any power ups now. Well, well, oh, there's a short. Oh, one of them's a shortcut. Anyway, so you get the idea of that. A bit more laggy, but still pretty good. So let's hit back on that. Have we got quit? I'd like it if they gave you like a proper quit out option, because then you know that game is shut. I know I can go in the menus, but it's a it's a bit of a fuss to do it. But then if you're going to sit down and play a game for a while, it's not too bad, is it? Right, probably this one. It's just menu upon menu. But it's a free game and it is pretty decent. What's this going to do? Oh, you've got... Have I got... No, there's no... You can't change any quality options, it looks like. Oh, no, there's sound and display. Camera view, speed, visual quality. Oh, we got we got very low on visual quality. Oh, I didn't know that was there. Uh, you just modified the visual quality. Your device may not fully support this setting. So the game boot reboots nice and quick. This is just running from an SD card, nothing fancy. I am overclocked to 2147 with 750 on the graphics. Well, that didn't look, that didn't look any different, did it? I think it's probably gonna be about the same. Oh no, no that's smoother. I would say that's probably smoother. Let's go for a little boost around the corner here. Yeah, I'd say that probably is a bit smoother. Yeah, I'd say that's made a bit of a difference. It's still not perfect, but, uh, but it's, again, I'm really impressed where we've come to from where it was before. Uh, the Google Play Store doesn't work. You have to use APQ, APK Pure for your ROMs, um, but it seems to work pretty well. I am still trying to get the Google Play Store working because I've got GTA Liberty City Stories that I've got on my Google account and several other uh, gamepad games. So that's probably enough of this game. Let's quit out of that. Okay, so that started fresh. Uh, oh, by the way, I did try Stadia and it said my network wasn't fast enough even on ethernet, so I'm not sure if there's something slow about the internet. Although from AP APK Pure, from APK Pure, it does seem to load the games all right. So let's go straight in for Redream, let's have some great emulation. And this is something that, so you've got a paid for or a light version, this is the free version. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I'm gonna need to turn off the music on this. See all the menus work nice and quick. Just turn down the music, although it's a great soundtrack. Oh, no, wrong one. It's 
So you can see that it looks brilliant and works. It's super responsive. Uh, super responsive, no lag, just just as you would want it to be, really. Just amazing. Just, I really wasn't expecting this this build of Android to be giving these sorts of results after uh, you know what games were like on the Consta Kang image. But this isn't as good at video, so you know you you pick your image for for what you need. But it shows that the Pi can do it with Android. So you imagine. Consta Kang's image with this and full Google Play support and all that is is you know going to be really nice. Oh, I'm not going to come out of that. Oh, I am. <laughs> anyway, so that's Tony Hawk's. Nice thing about this game as well is if I press Escape or Back, yeah, I can go properly into the Redream menu and you've got your save states and everything else on there. Uh, so if I exit that and that takes me back to the menu. Uh, so I've already done PPSSPP uh, in a previous video and it works great. GeForce Now, I can't remember what GeForce Now did, but it didn't work. Uh, what else was there? Xbox Game Streaming, I don't think worked, I can't remember now. Um, but let's do last one, let's do RetroArch. And this doesn't come with any cores in it, so you have to, uh, to add the cores yourself, but that's super easy to do. Uh, and you can see I've got PlayStation Portable on there as well, so that works as well as PPSSPP. You've got that in RetroArch as well. So if I go to uh, let's go for load content, and I put my content in. I need to configure this really in DCIM. So you can see I put all my games in there just just because it's easy to. I can find that folder very easily. So let's try Doom and let's try it on Parallel. Excite Bike, uh, which was the other game I had for N64, works, but it's still a bit slow. But it does actually work better than I've had in RetroPie. Uh, so something to do with it running through Android seems to make it better. But it's still, although the Parallel, I don't think I had on RetroPie. So the buttons are a bit weird. Strafe is the right and left button. But the left trigger is fire, and it's a bit of an odd one to get used to, but, and there is sound. Oh, wrong button. Anyway, you can see it's working, you can see it's nice and fast. If I just run around, you can see that it doesn't struggle at all. So that's N64 emulation, Dreamcast emulation. Uh, I haven't worked out how to quit out of RetroArch. I need to... I probably need to reconfigure it for my controller because I've got nothing that takes me back out yet. So then I end up doing this thing where I shut it down and start it again. But this is in beta. It's only the second version of it. I'm going to keep watching it on the website and see if there's any changes. If anybody else sees any changes, let me know and uh, I'll do another video on it because this is really good. The, the emulation options it gives you and also the Android games it gives you, really, really positive. Okay, so I think that's all for now. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover. But if you try this build yourself and you get different games to work, just let me know in the comments what games you had working and how well they worked because it is really impressive. Uh, if I press back from here, by the way, and keep going back, you've got this rootless pixel launcher, which is... Uh, so then you've got more of a tablet interface and then you can have a look through your apps in there if you prefer to do it in that way. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.